You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Let's Make Life Happen with author and host Dr. Eva Shaw is a show that will help you understand about self-sabotage behavior that has caused patterns in relationships, career, financial stress, and health. The Let's Make Life Happen approach is one that intertwines with solution-focused and cognitive behavioral therapy. So please welcome the host of Let's Make Life Happen, Dr. Eva Shaw. So this is Let's Make Life Happen, and I am your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Good morning. Good Friday morning. Welcome to my show. So I want to start off with uh, giving you my website address, and the reason for that is there's just so much information there for you. And so the address is makelifehappen.info. So, dot info. Someone once said, miracles happen when we show up. We never know what's going to happen if we show up at something, but a miracle can happen if you're not there. And so, both you and I are here this morning, and let's see what's going to happen in this hour. So my hope is always that you'll come back weekly and be able to hear each one. This is kind of like a series that's happening. It's based on uh, my book, which is called The Butterfly Flies, which just has been uh, released. And so uh, after a few shows, I hope you feel like you're going to be able to call in if you have some questions for me. That's perfectly acceptable. You can also send me, if you have questions, questions to my email. And my email is simply my initial E, Shaw, S-H-A-W, at makelifehappen.info. So to tell you the mission of the show, uh, I like I like everybody to kind of have this in their mind what the whole reason behind this show is and and uh, what my thoughts are for for the show. So I really want myself to be the person who makes your good day exceptional and helps turn your bad day into great learning experience so that you can say my life has changed since I met Eva. So let's make life happen today. Today is uh, chapter four in my book. And what I do is I give you a snapshot. Certainly can't give you the whole chapter or all of the ideas. But I give you a snapshot of what is in that chapter. And I believe it's chapter four today. And so we're talking about love and marriage. Zig Ziglar says... Many people spend more time in planning the wedding than they do in planning the marriage. And I think that that is a, I mean, I would, of course, agree with Zig Ziglar, but he he has a really, really good point there that sometimes I think people get so wrapped up in planning that wedding, which is a, a really big party, and a lot of planning goes into it, and they really tend to forget to talk about the marriage and what is coming after the wedding. So we're also talking about, as an umbrella, we're talking about self-sabotage behavior. I am a self-sabotage coach, as well as a registered clinical counselor. And my office and my practice is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And so I I have both. I actually added just a few years back the self-sabotage coaching skills to my practice and to what my knowledge is about 
because I looked at what my clinical counseling showed, and it really showed that, I believe, that self-esteem and self-confidence issues are kind of the core of most things. And so I added it to my toolbox, so to speak, um, a few years back. I'm a storyteller, and the more you get to know about me, you're going to know that's true. When you read my book, you're certainly going to know that that's true. And so I use my own life stories here and in my book and other examples as well that you can relate to and things that may be going on in your life. Or if you don't find anything that relates to you, maybe then you're just going to find the story kind of interesting and you might take it in and you might also share it with somebody else if it's appropriate too. So this morning I'm going to start with never forget how blessed you are. Don't mean don't be negative when you have to have so, when you have so many things, excuse me, when you have so many things to be positive about. And again, this refers to self-sabotage behavior because self-sabotage behavior and patterns have to do with negative thinking. So never forget how blessed you are. Always look at how blessed you are. Don't be negative when you have so much to be positive about. So find the positives, no matter what it is that you're going through or what's happening. And so here are a few things to think about. When couples come into my office, oftentimes they come <laughs> when they are almost got one foot into the courtroom, however you want to say that, and they're going looking at whether I want to stay in this marriage or whether I want a divorce. And sometimes it's just to come in to make that final decision. I always like it when couples come in far earlier than that and when a problem or an issue starts to arise, that's when they need to really start to talk to a counselor. I don't believe that we need to always be bringing in outsiders into a relationship because that can be very detrimental. People in our family, friends and so on um, can, can come in and take sides and divide people sometimes instead of helping. But to go to a professional when you have a question or you have something that you can't resolve, you have some conflict that's not not good, um, or to learn some skills just to enhance your marriage is really the time to see a counselor. But again, it's never too late, and uh, I would never, of course, discourage anybody at any time. So often when they come in, they're saying to me, um, my partner does this, that, and the other thing, and it's called the blame-shame story. And in the intake session, that's often where people go. And so in stabilizing the relationship, that's the first thing I have to get out of the way is this is about you as an individual. That is, it's not about the other person. You have to look at yourself and both of you have to do that. It's not going to work. You're not going to work as a couple if you can't work as an individual. So if you've heard the, either of the last two uh, shows, I've said, don't change so people will like you. So somebody might say to me, why would you say that? Well, the reason is that no one should change for somebody else. A person should only change because you want to become better in some part of your life. That also doesn't mean that we shouldn't listen to, our part, listen to our partner's constructive criticism or their feelings, and nor does it mean that we should put up with any form of abuse or violence. Let me just clarify right now. What I'm talking about this morning is relatively normal marriage relationships. I'm not talking about abuse or violence relationships. We need to look into our own faults and figure out what we can do to improve ourselves. So um, then we can decide at that point if something needs to change and we can go about making that happen. So I'm your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, 
and this is Let's Make Life Happen, and we are live this morning on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. So welcome back. I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Let's Make Life Happen. And I'm coming to you today from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. So before the break, I was talking about why do I say that don't change people so people will like you. But that doesn't mean that you don't need to change we're changing every day as human beings, and certainly in relationships, we change. It's always good if two people can change together, but oftentimes people are talking, about, are, are working with different things in their own lives, and so sometimes change doesn't happen together. But we need to, we do need to change, but we don't change so other people will like us. We change because we want to. I have a little illustration that I use, and it's um, a, a chess illustration. Now, I'm not a chess player, so I really don't know what I'm talking about. But I have a son who is a, an expert uh, playing chess and loves it and loves the game, so I do hear a little bit about it. I do know that there's a king and queen on that board. And so I think of them as representing a couple. And when I look at the chessboard, I look at, at the king and queen, and I think, okay, there's two independent people. And they're whole, and they're strong. They're am able to manage in life alone. They definitely can stand alone when they need to. So when choosing to be in a relationship with someone, we make a choice to be with that person. And I think that's often what we forget. We choose to be with that person. And with that other person in our life comes a variety of things. There's history. There's another family. There's that person's own set of skills. There's opinions, which are good things. And there's a belief system and more. So with this choice of being with someone comes an interdependent relationship where the two interdependent people become, excuse me, I said that wrong, the two independent people become interdependent. Now, what the heck does that word mean? What is interdependent? We've heard codependent probably most of our life. It's been quite a, a buzzword in the counseling profession. But this one is interdependent. Interdependent, simply put, 
this is my words, not the dictionaries, is a word for being able to function together and to bring out the best in the other person and to endure what isn't so lovely because we're not all perfect and we aren't all lovely all of the time. And so interdependent is being able to function together and bring out the best in the other person and endure at times what isn't so lovely. And a committed relationship is work. I know when I was young, I used to hear that. And I used to think, what in the world does that mean you have to work at a relationship? I had no clue. I had no clue when I got married that I had to work at that. I thought it was just going to roll and happen. And my goodness, that romance would just be at the top of the bar all the time. And that everything would just be amazing. No, this was just going to be a wonderful ride. And I found out very quickly that something had to change. I didn't know what I had to change at that time. But I knew something had to change because it is work. And now, many, 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 many years later, I certainly understand. And I'm teaching to people what that work is about. Um, that work is also on a daily basis. You can't leave that work for any length of time because if you do, there will be a problem arise. So being respectful and honorable in a marriage is the key, and that's even when there's conflict. Conflict is healthy because two people have two opinions, and that's not a wrong thing. It is a good thing. So often two opinions turn out to be the same in the end anyway. So let me just pull this apart a little bit here. Um, being respectful, respectful. I've taken some a lot of the John Gottman courses. John Gottman uh, has a uh, service and a teaching center in Seattle. And I love his work. And he says over and over again, that respect and being respectful to the other person is what marriage is all about. And that is where the work has to be put in, is into respecting the other person no matter what. So we have to be respectful, and with that brings honor. And that's the key. And conflict is a good thing in a marriage. It is not a bad thing. But it has to be worked out and worked with and talked through in a healthy way so that when you come out the other side maybe you've even had a, some loud words or whatever we have emotions for heaven's sakes but when you come out the other side you can look at the person and say you know what I didn't like you very much maybe last night when we had that conflict but I sure do love you and that is the way that conflict needs to end So there's another word in relationship, and it is the biggest, well, they're all big words, but this is the F word, and it is a big word, believe me, and F in relationship means forgiveness, and forgiveness needs to be utilized daily, because without forgiveness in a relationship, the relationship isn't going to last. Because what happens is people get really hurt. They shut down. They lose their independence. Their self-esteem suffers. Their self-confidence blows in the wind. And defensiveness comes in. And that's where the blame game begins. It's always the other person's fault when it comes to that. And so forgiveness is about letting go of things. I always have, I, I always, I would say always, that's a pretty general word, but most times at least, when couples come into my office, I say to them in the intake office, okay, so you've been married how many years? 15, let's say. So you've got 15 years of history here. So, so we know that there's things that have to be let go of, and that's what we talk about first. And so... Um, I am 
going to go to a break. I'll come back to that thought in a bit. And I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and you're listening to Let's Make Life Happen. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, I am Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Let's Make Life Happen. And today we're talking about love and marriage. Uh, So when we left, I was talking about forgiveness and talked about how uh, forgiveness is the biggest F word in marriage. You have to remember that word. It's forgiveness. And forgiveness... um, talk it it will keep from the blame game happening in a relationship when people come in i ask them how long they've been married and so on and so forth and to get an idea of how much history i have here to deal with and we start to talk about what is in a pile in the middle of the floor because if things aren't resolved in a relationship then it becomes like And I'm a country girl, so some of my illustrations are very country. And that pile in the floor is like the manure pile that was on the farm where I was raised with my mom and my dad. And uh, as a little girl, I used to go out and climb up that manure pile. Can you only imagine? And in the middle of the room with many couples, there is a pile of stuff and it can be compared to something like what I've just told you. And that has to be resolved. That has to be gotten rid of. And the best thing is to not have it happen in the beginning. So I'm going to shift a little bit here to um, another illustration. Because in my book, I talk about the house of love. And the house of love is something that I have used for years with my clients and it's my own concept but it's based on the uh, couple being the house and their relationship is the house and today I'm only going to talk a touch about the foundation because the foundation of that house is love the foundation holds love that will never fail no matter what comes We get our minds into the things that the TV teaches us and the soap operas teach us and I don't know what else, the billboards and advertising, all kinds of stuff teaches us that love is and it's all romantic and it's all short-lived. 
And romantic love is amazing and wonderful and one of the things that should absolutely be in marriage because it keeps the marriage alive, keeps it exciting. But there's another kind of love, and that's what I call the foundation of love, the foundational love. Romantic love is like a little um, sunshine in the sky, sunshine cloud, I call it, in the sky. But the foundation love is the foundation of the house. It's where you go when the going gets tough and foundational love holds all the memories of your life or your times together. So things like where and when you met. Wow, that was when you got the attraction. What you first saw that attracted you to your partner. Maybe that first kiss, maybe the first embrace. Oh, all these fun things. <laughs> then maybe it comes to the birth of the children, the anniversaries, the birthdays, all of those things, family trips, and so much more. The longer you're together, the more things can go into and build that foundation of love. When we think of a house, we know that if the bricks on the side of a house get a crack in them, that then the foundation is going to get weak because the moisture can get through. And so one of the bricks is respect. And there's many other, and I don't have time this morning to talk about the other bricks in this picture. But that's what we've been talking about up to now. And respect and keeping the foundational love and running to the foundational love when problems come in is what's going to keep your marriage intact. So when the going gets tough, then the memories that entail love, even though you may not feel loving at that moment, is what's going to keep it together. You know what? Sometimes we don't even like our partner. <laughs> you know what? On TV, it shows, it shows that everything is always healed and whatever, but sometimes... It's okay to not like your partner. If you have conflict, you're not going to necessarily like that other person at the moment, and that's okay. As long as you know that you love that person and you come out of that knowing that the foundational love is gonna is keeping you going. So I don't know whether that makes sense to you or whether I put that very well or not. Don't walk away with just, I don't have to like you anymore because she said so. It's that sometimes just because we're human, we don't necessarily like the opinion or whatever of our partner. And I'm just saying that that's an okay thing. But we must love and we must go to the place of love, which is the foundation. Um, we, we, again, respect again, comes into all of this. So no name calling, no defensiveness, no control. Those things cannot be in a relationship on any level. So no name calling ever, no defensiveness ever. If you're right, you don't need to defend it. No control, but acceptance of what the other person is saying and what they're coming from, even if you don't agree with it. So what's this about? This is called empathy, which is the ability to step into the shoes of the other person and aiming to understand their feelings their feelings and their perspectives, and to use that understanding to guide our own actions. So empathy. Empathy has to be there. You have to get to the place of where you understand where the other person is coming from and that you can understand their and accept their emotions around that. So in a perfect world, we bring out the best in the other person and we focus on the positives that the person brings to the world that we enjoy together. We leave the negatives to work themselves out because lots of negatives will. There are some that won't and that's why we need to have good conflict skills and use the respect again. But uh, lots of negative things work themselves out without you having to do much about that. And just remember, and in, in my notes here, I've got it in capital letters, abuse is never okay. So some necessities that are in a relationship. S spend some quality time together because a relationship must always 
be nurtured. So right now, we're live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Make Life Happen. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes, and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. jobsannex.com. That's j o b s a n n e x.com. So coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, you are listening to Let's Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw. So we're talking about love and marriage today. And so some necessities in a relationship. So let, here's a few point forms of things that are very necessary in a relationship. So you must spend quality time together. A relationship must always be nurtured. So when people come in and talk with me, one of the things that has often happened is that life has happened, which means that there's so much going on with the kids. The kids have got all of these school after-school things. They have to go to all these things in the evening, hockey early in the morning, all of those kinds of things. Um, the parents have meetings. There's so often shift work involved. Um, and so it's really hard sometimes to spend quality time together but one of the things you have to do is find the way. Because if you don't nurture a relationship, you're not going to have it. And there's no other way to say it. It has to be, it has to be nurtured. You have to spend time together. Um, the, the thing is, when you meet someone new, you want to be with them all the time. And you spend lots of time together. And you talk lots. Hours and hours and hours and hours, if possible. And when you're not talking in person, you're talking on the phone and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and sometimes I say to couples, please watch teenagers. Please study teenagers. They know how to do the talk, the walk, and they know how to do the hugs and all of that stuff and some things they shouldn't be doing. But anyway, they have somewhat of a handle that we sometimes lose later on in our life. Children and young people are really great teachers, uh, of adults because we lose some of those those wonderful things anyway so nurture your relationship and talk about your relationship with a smile so I tell people to um, I like I like the kitchen table the place to sit down the place to talk the bedroom is not the place to do talking or conflict but the kitchen table can handle all of that and try and talk about your relationship with a smile. We talk about date nights um, all of the time. And again, that's kind of a cliche thing that people 
just it's kind of one of those words and one of those things is happening again, which is awesome because it needs to happen. A date night needs to happen. I like to I like to have people set up once a week, but I, sometimes that's not possible. But it is necessary to have a date night. And a date night is not about talking about problems. A date night is just like a date when you were young. It's about going out and having fun together. It's about being alone usually, um, sometimes with friends, not with kids. It's about being in an adult environment together and having some fun together, doing things. And yes, sitting down and talking with a smile at each other and focusing on some of those really good memories that brought, brought you together in the beginning. Setting appointment times, people laugh at me when I tell them this. Well, sometimes our calendar is so full with everything else, why wouldn't we set an appointment to be with our spouse? We have to set appointments sometimes to just be with ourselves and get it on the calendar. And then both of you keep that appointment time because it is number one priority, not at the bottom, at the top. Know when to say time out, know what to do with that time out is something else that's really, really important because we teach our kids time out, or we should be, and we need as adults to use adult time out when we start to get upset or feeling, starting to feel anger or whatever, then it's time to say time out. And it's, it's also um, with that strategy, you need to say I'm coming back. Uh, couples who use time adult time out and use it well it works really well if you don't use it well it's not going to work well so let's say you say time out and you leave and the person doesn't know you're coming back or where you're going or any of those kinds of things it can work in a very adverse way so you have to be very respectful and have conversation about time out before you actually do it make sure you have couple relationships with other couples Because you can learn from them and they can learn from you. And that's a really, really good thing. So that you have peer support and and so on. Boundaries in relationship. Each couple needs to set down what their personal relationship boundaries are. And different couples have different things that they put in as boundaries so you have to figure out some things like what about having friends is it okay in our relationship and what do we think around each of us having opposite sex friends so the woman having male friends and the male having female friends what about that is that okay is that going to work in our relationship Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but there needs to be some strict boundaries around these things, and they need to be talked out by a couple. So because I'm a self-sabotage coach, and that's what we're talking about today, we are going to move to that. So how does self-sabotage work in a couple relationship? Might It's probably easier to understand it in a single relationship than in a couple relationship, but Certainly, self-sabotage comes into uh, the the uh, whole thing of being a couple because you've got two people coming together who probably both have, well, I know have, some self-sabotage issues. And those self-sabotage issues will be different, and they'll be on a different level. So when you come together, you've got a double whammy here, and you need to know what you're going to do with that. So both of you are bringing into the relationship uh, the self-sabotage stuff that has been there, and you're both at a different deserve level. Remember I talked about deserve level being um, what you think of yourself and what you think you deserve in life or what you think you don't deserve in life. And so the deserve level is like goal-setting. And you have to set higher goals in your life all of the time to achieve what you want to achieve in different areas of your life. So both of you are going to probably be at a different deserve level. And we're all in a different place with this. So 
We'll talk a little bit more about things like finances and so on in a minute. So this is Let's Make Life Happen, and I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and we're live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Please stay tuned. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Let's Make Life Happen comes to you today live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I am your host, Dr. Eva Shaw. So we're talking about love, marriage, and self-sabotage. So possibly when a couple comes together, there's self-sabotage, and it could be to do with many different things, but one of them, probably the main one, I don't know, but one of them could be finances. So there may be problems where this couple needs to have a look at how they're managing and handling their finances and what they're thinking and how they've been taught to do with finances. Usually I find um, with a couple that one, one person of the couple is stronger in the financial area, maybe has had training and so on or maybe works in the financial industry and sometimes that's the person that handles finances uh, in with the couple Um, the other person may not have had that training but may want to learn that and so those are all different kinds of things that we can work with but finances and self-sabotage go together so much and not knowing how to deal with financial self-sabotage can be um, a heartbreaking thing actually and then the other another one is possibly in the relationship self-sabotage is where the person wants to run away when there's an issue so let's think about the conflict we talked about this morning I mostly have been talking about when things go kind of good with the conflict because it's a good thing. But there are people who just want to run away. So they shut down when anything conflictual comes up and they want out of there. Just get me out of this room. I don't want to talk about this. I want to just shut the door. And in my own life at one time very early on again in my first marriage, lots of t- I, w- I would try to talk and I didn't talk then like I do now because I was very young, but uh, we tried to talk about something with my husband and he would just get up and leave the room. And that was like shutting the door in my face and I would become very angry and it just wasn't good. And that is a self-sabotage thing. And it could be about maybe career issues. Maybe one or the other hasn't had a fulfilling career and maybe they're upset about that. And maybe they regret that they didn't get the education for a better job, and that's causing dissatisfaction in their life. 
that could be coming from self-sabotage and things that they believe about themselves or they have heard about themselves. As I told you a little bit about my life in the first session, um, I wasn't the smartest kid on the block. And in, in my young years, I wasn't thought of, I didn't think other people thought of me as being intelligent at all. And because that was, for some reason, the message that I got, um, I didn't think I would succeed. I got through high school. Yes, I did. I had one year I failed, but I got through high school and came out the other end and got married very, very quickly. And one of the reasons that I firmly believe is because I didn't believe that I could make it in life on my own. I had a grade 12 education, but it became very clear to me that more than that was needed. And it was just much easier for me to relax, lay back and have children than it was to look at those issues in my life and go forward in a different way. And those were some big things that came out of self-sabotage in my life that caused huge problems for me. So these are just a few examples of things that could be self-sabotage. And as an individual, these things need to be understood. And the deserve level needs to be understood and it needs to be raised. And as a couple, it's a really good thing to understand what the other person is working on. So good communication is necessary and it has to be in a safe and a respectful place and time. Lots of people come in and say to me, our issue is communication. One word, our 25 years of problems is to do with communication. They don't know this, but I just kind of shake my head because communication is made up of so many different things. It's not just about talking. Uh, it's it's a, all the things that we're talking about is really about communication. And so uh, when somebody comes in and says we have communication problems, I'm not surprised. Yes, uh-huh. But we need to go further and figure this out because that's pretty complicated. It's not just about communication. So always remember that you choose the person you're with, as I've said, two people together. Remember the strong chess couple, the king and the queen, can work through anything when they stay on the same page with respect and empathy coming from both sides. Think of what you can accomplish together. You'll accomplish much more together probably than on your own or you'll accomplish different things together. So the couple is strong when they're together, but only if they are strong when they're on their own. You need to build each other so you will be built yourself. If you build each other, you're going to be built too. You're going to learn from each other. It's an awesome, awesome thing when it works well and you understand these things. So I've already told you that you chose the other person. So I'm going to tell you that again. And they chose you too. So don't change the people or the person that you chose. Why change that person? Don't even try to change that person. Watch that person evolve. Be yourself and be the right people. Ah, sorry. Be yourself and the right people will love the real you. So if you're you yourself and you're a real person, people are going to like that. They're going to walk toward you on the street because you're going to be smiling. And being real is sometimes um, has to really be learned. I've had to learn that. Uh, believe me, writing a book and talking about your own life really makes you become real. And a lot of years has gone into me coming to the place where I feel that I'm a real person and I can be a real, a real person on most, uh, most levels. That doesn't mean that I'm telling you everything. That doesn't mean that um, I, I, it's not safe to tell everything about life to everybody. That's not a safe place to be. And so I've had to put boundaries in place, but I've had to come to the place of realizing how real I have to be and where boundaries um, have to be in place for me. And I've had to do put a lot of thought into that. And so be the right person for the other person and love that person as you love yourself. 
So I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is Let's Make Life Happen. And we're coming to, to you today from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com. Dot com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. So I'm Dr. Eva Shaw, and this is make, Let's Make Life Happen, coming to you today from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So we've almost had an hour together. I'm wondering what you're thinking, and I'm wondering um, if this has changed any of your thinking or where that's at for you. Um, I want to just kind of conclude this part of of my show with another little thought for you. Um, Each person is responsible to find out things in themselves. And so that what I'm talking about there is love, happiness and joy. Got to find those things for yourself. And if both people in a relationship are happy individuals and love themselves and have found joy... Combine that with the love, happiness, and joy of the other person. And you know what? There's going to be happy children in that household. And they're going to grow up and and they're going to feel and love and know how to express love, happiness, and joy. And love, happiness, and joy is very catching. If somebody really has that, it's catching. All over the world, it will catch. So I want you to try it and see if that's for you. So last week, we're, last week I said that words are powerful. And I think from what I've told you today that you can see that they truly are. They can hurt, they can heal, they can teach, or they can bring destruction. Words can bruise the spirit or they can bring joy into being. Remember the things that brought you together with that other person and focus on them. Remember the foundation of love. Because if you've chosen to love someone, your love can then again become, uh, you can love them again. So if you feel you're losing that love, you can love them again. Because love is a choice. So I want to give you my contact information again. Uh, Remember, I've told you, I have a website. It's makelifehappen.info. You can find on there that you can set an appointment on my calendar, and I do do video sessions. I do do telephone sessions um, as well as anyone that can come to my office. I, of course, do in-office ones as well, and you can book on my website. Uh, Send your questions to me at eshaw at makelifehappen.info and I'll address them on the show. And let me know if there's a topic that you would like me to expand on because then I will try and do another show on that topic. 
I welcome you to, um, uh, as, as I've said, to put uh, something on my website. So the mission, uh, people sometimes ask me what Make Life Happen approach is. And somebody somewhere in the author unknown said, we are to make the table. God gives us the tree to make that table, but we've got to make that table. And so that table really is our life. And so we take the wood from the tree and we make our life. So that's what make life happen is about. If we don't do our part, we're going to be doing ourselves an injustice because we are the one that makes our life decision and choices. And we've got to set our goals and build our confidence and go for it. Life is really about going for it. So again, just a little bit about uh, as a review, um, a summary of self-sabotage behavior. It's very simple. Ha ha ha. I say that because it's a lot of work, but it is simple in knowing it is about our deserve life, our deserve level in life. And deserve level is feeling that we don't deserve. So we throw it away. We give up or not start it. We stop before we get finished or we settle for less than the best. That's what deserve level is. It's also something we don't realize that we do. It is unconscious. So so remember, you can call into the show with your questions. You can email me your questions. I like to have conversation with my listeners. My website's makelifehappen.info. And last but not least, I always promise you a quote to remember this week. So it is, don't change so people will like you. Be yourself and the right people will love the real you. So this is Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw, on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And until next week, please keep smiling and goodbye for now. You've been listening to Let's Make Life Happen with your host, Dr. Eva Shaw. To understand behavior and change your deserved level in life, to achieve health, happiness, and fulfillment, listen each week here on Dr. Eva Shaw's Let's Make Life Happen. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.